Good afternoon, y'all. My name is Gregory Ajid, and I am the Artistic Director of Second Line Arts Collective. I'd like to thank you very much for joining me for my masterclass this afternoon. And this is a, another masterclass in our Sana Online Masterclass series. Today's masterclass is called From Amateur to Pro, 10 Must-Have Items for Musicians. Uh, for those of you just joining us for the first time, um, I represent an organization called Second Line Arts Collective. Uh, Second Line Arts is a 501c3 nonprofit founded in 2017. Our tagline is music education from recess to record deals. We have several uh, programs that we run throughout the year. Uh, the first of which is called the Sanaa Music Workshop, which is a pre-professional arts training program that runs during the summer here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we specialize in artistic training and entrepreneurship training. Uh, the second program that we run is called Little Stompers, which is a music education program that um, focuses on children ages one to five years old. Um, we have a class called uh, Little Stompers Family Classes, and those are family classes geared towards that age group. Uh, Little Stompers also extends into elementary and middle schools. And the goal of that program is to create a love and appreciation for music and more specifically, New Orleans music. My name is Gregory Ajid. For those of you who are just meeting me for the first time, uh, I am a clarinetist, I play saxophone, band leader, composer, educator. Uh, I have performed with uh, musicians such as uh, Delphio Marcellus. Um, I currently work with Michael Buble. Uh, I also have put out several uh, records with my quartet, the Gregory Ajid Quartet. And just generally, I'm a freelance musician based out of New Orleans, Louisiana. However, I am very fortunate to work throughout the world. Um, I began performing professionally in 2009 when I graduated from college. Um, in the past, I have worked at the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, also known as NOCA, Tulane University, uh, Warren Eastern Charter High School here in New Orleans. And I am also a co-founder of Second Line Arts. So today's agenda, we're going to cover 10 steps and 10 items that each musician needs to take to go from being an amateur to a professional. And the intent of this workshop, again, is to provide, uh, let, let's say you're a musician just leaving college and you have a dream of being a world-renowned artist. Uh, you either want to be a solo artist or put your band out into the world. And oftentimes I find my students kind of um, with the question of what do I do next? So today I wanted to cover 10 tangible steps that each one of you can take to help develop your career from the amateur part of your life to present and be ready for any professional opportunity that may come your way. So today we're going to be covering social media. We're going to talk about registering with a PRO agency. We're going to talk about creating recordings, an invoice and contract template, press photos, biography, website, booking emails, and a one sheet, an LLC or S Corp. And finally, we're going to wrap it up with cohesive, creating a logo and cohesive branding. So again, today's workshop is going to be all geared towards the question of what should I do or what should I do next? So if you've ever asked yourself, what do I do next? Uh, I hope you can use this as a reference for if you haven't accomplished all 10 of these items, you should probably do one of these things next. Um, it's important to have each one of these items handy. It's very important to um, when someone, when a client or a music festival asks you for a press photo, it's important to have the press photo ready to go. Um, again, this is a list of items and steps that will help you in your music career. It's going to help you present in a professional way and also I'll tell people that you're hireable. Um, it'll help you develop your brand. And ultimately, the goal of this is to further your career to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So first of all, 
a lot of times in these conversations, we talk about musical proficiency. And I love this analogy. There's a young, a young person here standing. Uh, I'm assuming he's about to go on a roller coaster of some sort. And, you know, if you've ever seen one of those signs that say, hey, you must be this tall to ride the ride. And so this young man is just an inch or two above the line. And it says, again, you know, you must be 42 inches to ride this ride. And he must be 44 inches tall. And I love this analogy because I feel deep in my heart that this is the same way that the music business works. And it's a good analogy for your musical proficiency and success in the industry. So musical proficiency, y'all, it's understood that you're always working on your musicianship and musical proficiency. You know, y'all, we're musicians. Music is our passion. And that's why we entered entered this industry. Um, I think it's important for all of us to always honor that reality and stay true to what initially got us into this business. Um, and going back to that photo of the young man standing there with the, uh, the, you must be tall, this tall to ride the ride. And for me, when I think of that photo, the line in the musical, in the music industry is that's called good enough. And once you're musically good enough, being better musically is not always going to correlate directly to more or better opportunities in the industry. So I want to say that one more time. Once you're good enough, being better as a musician is not always going to directly correlate to more or better opportunities in the industry. And as someone who is a musician, I have internally struggled with that reality. And I know a lot of my peers also struggle with that reality. So once again, y'all, being better musically is not always going to translate to better gigs and better opportunities. So my next thing, have you ever wondered why, I'm going to put this in quotes, sad musicians get great gigs? Well, y'all, going back to that photo, these musicians are good enough. And once you're good enough, the career you have is not going to, you know, it's not going to vary greatly whether you're one inch above the line or if you're five feet above the line. Once you're good enough, other things determine your success in the industry. And those things are relationships, reliability, marketing, professionalism, punctuality, dependability, social media, um, the, the, the desire to connect with an audience. I can't tell you how many musicians and artists don't even care about connecting with an audience. Um, being proactive and many other skills that ultimately have nothing to do with your musical ability. So once again, once you're good enough, the other things matter in your success in this industry. So my words of encouragement to all the people who are actually trying to be great musicians is take advantage of this knowledge. There's no reason why the, you know, quote unquote, sad musicians need to, you know, can be the only ones to take advantage of this reality, you know, be killing, be a great musician and also build relationships, be reliable, develop your marketing, be professional, connect with your audience. I think it's, it's, it's again, like as a musician who loves music and wants to be great at music, we have to take advantages and we have to acknowledge that reality so that we can perform for great audiences and see our dreams come into reality. And if, you know, I believe that if we don't develop relationships, be reliable, develop these non-musical skills, we're just going to be an unbelievable musician that no one knows about. So take advantage of that reality. Be a killing musician with great opportunities. Today, number one, uh, the number one thing on this checklist is developing your social media. So social media is the easiest way for your audience to find you. And once again, if you're going to be a musician or any artist, in the world, you need an audience to consume your art, right? Uh, Seth Godin has this definition of art 
And he says that art is anything that inspires change in someone else. And a key part of that process is the someone else. That someone else is our audience. Brand awareness. Social media will help you with brand awareness. People can discover your brand. You have the ability to control the narrative that surrounds you and what your band does. Social media. You can also connect with a global audience. You know, I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, and we're relatively isolated from the rest of the world. However, through my social media, I've been able to connect with people who live all over the world. And that reality would have been significantly more difficult for me to do 20 years ago. Again, going back to Seth Godin's definition of art, we have to create change in people. And one of the most foundational parts of that change is building relationships. This business is all about building relationships. Every opportunity that I have ever received in my life has come from some type of relationship that I have built. And 90% of these relationships, I, I never developed them or built them with the intent of getting anything from anyone. These are just happen to be friends or colleagues or people like classmates in school or something like that, that we just genuinely had a good relationship. And, you know, when, when one of my coworkers from, from, or one of my classmates from college gets presented with an opportunity. They're like, oh, hey, you know, I remember Greg. Greg used to practice. He was a friendly guy, easy to work with. Let's hit him up. And I promise you, in this, in this business, so many of the opportunities that come your way are going to be from the relationships you've developed. And I would be very surprised if you've ever just submitted an application and actually gotten that job. In building relationships, it also allows you to connect with your audience. One of my favorite parts about social media is that it's it's cost effective, y'all. Building a social media following can be more effective than actually paying a publicist. You know, if you have a product coming out, you could hire a publicist for about $5,000 for a three-month campaign. And that publicist will straight up say there's no guarantee of any publicity if you pay them $5,000. And if you have developed your social media, if you've created a strong, strong following with good relationships, your social media following could be worth significantly more than $5,000. You know, you could actually forego a publicist if you have a great social media following. I've seen Many um, of my musician peers do that. Someone like Chad Lefwitz Brown is a great example of how effective social media could be for someone. So again, y'all, social media, it's free. Um, Social media could be another way of distributing your creativity. You could, you know, create little one minute videos for Instagram, whatever. Social media is another distribution platform for your creativity. It's another arm of your artistry. Um, a couple, couple social media platforms that are out in the world today. And again, y'all, it's all subject to change because it's a fast changing world and what is now might not be tomorrow. Um, so Facebook, Facebook is the largest social media platform in the world. It's, uh, generally targets an audience of 35 plus. And unfortunately I fall into that category, although I don't actually use Facebook very much. But in general, each one of these social media platforms is going to have somewhat of a unique audience. So Facebook, 35 plus. Instagram is going to target the age group of like 18 to 35. Instagram prioritizes images, videos, and reels. And it's good for connecting people who care about who you are. Um, Facebook or excuse me, Instagram is more about personal relationships. Like people will follow me on Instagram because they are invested in Gregory Ajid, the person. They they may have some personal connection with me and care about my, you know, what I'm doing in the world and such. Facebook and Instagram are both owned by Meta. Um, The reason why I want to differentiate Instagram as a good place for 
um, people who care about who you are is because on the flip side, then we have TikTok. Um, TikTok is the fastest growing social media platform in the world. And I actually saw a TikTok about this and it really resonated with me. And this person said, on TikTok, people don't care about who you are. They just care about the information or the entertainment you have for them in that moment. So I think it's a good way of differentiating how to create content and the function of each one of those platforms. Instagram, they care about who you are. TikTok, who you are doesn't really matter. It's the information that you have for the audience that really matters. YouTube is owned by Google and YouTube is a great place for long, long form videos. I think of it as the modern version of TV programs. LinkedIn is another great place to be. It's a professional social, social networking site and is a great place to expand your professional work for, excuse me, it's a great place to, to expand your professional network and share your expertise. Um, people who are looking for nine to five type jobs, not necessarily in the arts industry, um, this is a great place to be hired and to shop your resume around and again, build connections. Great place to find a job. X is formerly known as Twitter, and it provides up to the minute news and current events. Uh, it's a good place for conversations and voicing opinions. And I'm going to sarcastically say that it's also a great place for getting into heated arguments with people about, you know, the happenings of the world. Threads is also is Meta's version of X. And both of these platforms are more short form, like you maybe 150 characters or so you um, update on like what's happening, what you're thinking about, and then people will comment from there. In 2024, or ever since the pandemic, live streaming has become a huge, huge thing on the internet. Twitch is a great live streaming platform. Uh, one of my peers, uh, this fantastic saxophone player named uh, Patrick Bartley, is a Twitch celebrity. And he live streams his video games. Uh, he plays video games on there. And then he also plays saxophone. So, I mean, he has a huge following. I think he's making a lot of money off of it. Um, again, you know, Twitch offers a variety of content, such as gaming, entertainment, sports, and music. Um, some other social media platforms out there, talk about Snapchat, Pinterest, Telegram, Reddit, Tumblr, WhatsApp, Discord, um, and you know what? In the future, they're going to be a lot more. And I may have forgotten some, but my apologies. You know, I'm at this point now, I feel like I'm like aging out of the game just a little bit. And um, it, it takes me a little bit more effort to re re remain relevant and know what the current trends are. So I really appreciate doing things like this. So anyways, just in general with social media, you can't be everywhere at once. Um, it's too difficult to post on Instagram, then post on Twitter, and then post, make a long form video on Google. And, you know, it's, if you're a working artist, you have to, you have to, you can't be everywhere at the same time. So I would suggest to you pick one, two, or three platforms that resonate with you and invest in those. Ultimately, you want to be a creator and not a consumer. Don't spend your life doom scrolling on any of these platforms. You know, you are a creator. So make sure that the platform is working for you and you are not working for the platform. Create content. Don't consume it. Um, be aware also that social media platforms come and go. So just because, um, you know, Instagram is here today doesn't mean Instagram is going to be here tomorrow. So always be ready to pivot uh, it's also important to come to terms with that reality because algorithms change. And one day, you know, for me personally, you know, during the pandemic, I was getting unbelievable views on Instagram. And over the last year, it's like, I feel like I'm like, I ask myself what happened. So algorithms change, trends change, and these mega corporations can decide what content they want to promote. So just don't put all of your eggs in one basket. And when things change, just be ready to pivot when that reality happens. Again, I think it's really important for y'all to find a healthy way of interacting with the internet. 
be authentic. Authenticity will allow you to be consistent. And in this industry, I believe longevity is key. And those of us who are in the game for the longest amount of time will have an increased chance of finding that opportunity. So authenticity, being true to ourselves, is going to allow us to be present for the long haul. Always prioritize your mental health. Longevity, consistency are the keys to success. You know, don't post 20 things on Sunday. Post one thing every day or one thing every other couple days. You know, consistency is the key to success here. Um, My suggestion to all of y'all with the content that you create, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Create things. If you see a video that you like, try and recreate the same video, but from your perspective. Um, just, you know, if also, if there's ever like any content that you wish existed, that's the universe telling you, Hey, maybe I should create this content. So if there's ever any content that you like are searching for and you can't find, I promise you there's probably somewhere, someone else in the world looking for that content and you can be the person that creates that content for that audience. Once again, y'all take advantage of the live streaming revenues that can be made off of um, pro, uh, off of uh, platforms like TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, Discord, Instagram, and such. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. I feel like social media is, is the one we're going to spend the most amount of time on because it's so important. And I believe if you have a cell phone or a computer, you can partake in it. So it's the easiest one to partake in. All right. Number two on the list is register with a PRO agency. A PRO agency is a performing rights agency. These agencies collect and distribute public performance royalties. There are three main agencies that exist. One is called ASCAP. Next one is BMI. And the third is called CSAC. Ultimately, it doesn't matter which one of these three you register with. I am personally registered with ASCAP. I know plenty of people who are registered with BMI. Um, From my understanding, I believe CSAC is more of an international PRO agency. So I feel like most people in the United States are either registered with ASCAP or BMI, but it does not matter which one of the three you register with. I would suggest that each one of us register as a publisher and a writer. When a composition is created, the, the writer is entitled to 50% of the, um, the, the, um, the, the royalty distribution and the publisher is entitled to the other 50%. So if you are self-releasing music, you are not only the writer of that composition, but you are also the publisher of it. So you want to collect 100% of your royalties. So each one of us should register as a publisher and a writer. PRO agencies are responsible for licensing um, uh, music. So let's say you own a business and they use music. If uh, the music venues are registered with PROs, um, radio stations, TV networks, streaming services, live concert venues, retail stores, anywhere where there's music being performed on the radio or live, they are registered with the PRO agency. They pay that agency a fee and then that fee gets distributed to the owners of the songs that are performed. The PRO agency is responsible for royalty collection. They collect performance royalties from these licensees. They are also responsible for royalty distribution. They are the ones who divvy up those checks to the appropriate publishers and writers. And also these agencies advocate for the rights of writers and publishers. So they do a lot of good work. It's also important, again, if you've ever written a song and you want to get paid, you need to be part of one of these organizations. For all of uh, you out there, you know, a lot of things like uh, Spotify, there are a lot of um, digital uh, performance royalties that happen throughout the Internet. And there is an organization specifically dedicated to getting those digital performance royalties. And that's called Sound Exchange. 
everyone should register with Sound Exchange so that you can, again, get all the royalties that you are entitled to for digital distribution. All right, y'all. Number three on the list is called Create Recordings. Y'all, we're artists, so we have to create recordings. So when you create a recording, the first thing you should do is register your song with the United States Copyright Office. I believe you can also register your album with the United States Copyright Office. It is extremely important that you have a copyright on all of your original work to protect you from any future issues that may arise. If someone samples your song, if someone steals your composition, you want to have that copyright so that it's an open and shut case. You don't want to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars litigating something. Uh, if you have that copyright, if you have that copyright, it's the end of story. So once again, when you write a composition, register your composition with the United States Copyright Office, and then you can register it with the PRO agency that you just signed up for. Again, PROs are ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. As an artist, I can tell you that there's never a right time to record your first album. You know, I think that um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be ready, to be perfect. And unfortunately, I'm 37 years old and I still don't feel ready or perfect. So it's important for all of us to understand that we, a lot of us share in that experience together. And it's our duty to find a way to overcome that barrier that we may have and go ahead and create that recording. Some things that help me in that process are just thinking of albums in different ways. Albums are documentations. It's a documentation of your artistry at a given time. It's like a photograph of you from when you were a child or when you're a young adult or when you're in your 30s or 40s. It's nice to see who you were at that moment in time. And an album is just a snapshot of your artistry in that moment. Ellis Marcellus said this to me once. When I, when I created my first record, I gave my record to Ellis. And he, I asked him, hey, can you check this out and let me know what you think? And he was like, well, it's really hard to know um, if this is a good album because I have nothing to compare it to. And what he meant or what I understood he meant is that, you know, when you just have one piece of art in the world, it's hard to determine an artistic process that's happened. You just have one thing. And artistic growth can only be determined in relation to a catalog of work or recordings. So if you have three or four records, then you can judge that first one like, hey, you know, it was there artistic growth. Is there an artistic process happening with this person? So I would encourage all of you all to create as many recordings as possible. Only through a body of work can you determine artistic growth and value. Recordings are essential to your artistry. A recording is a documentation in a moment of time. It's a product that you share with the world. It ultimately elevates your status as a band leader and an artist. Once you have this recording, you can apply for better performance opportunities. It tells the world, hey, I'm legit, I'm ready, and I should be taken seriously. When you create your first recording, it can be a very costly venture. Be creative in how you choose to fund projects. If you're lucky enough to come from a family with a lot of money, ask for some donations. Um, if you know some investors, wealthy people, ask them for some contribution. Um, do a GoFundMe campaign. There are grants at home. Uh, you can apply for grants. I have two grants listed here. The New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Community Partnership Grant. That's a great opportunity for Louisiana artists. Also, the Recording Fund is a national grant to help record projects. So there are a lot of opportunities and ways that you can fund projects. Learn how to record from home. 
You know, it's 2024. I'm sure a lot of you have home recording studios and have friends who are very, very knowledgeable in how to record from home. So take advantage of that technology. Your first project doesn't need to have a $10,000 budget. Um, You know, I like to use the reference of like Blue Note recordings. They are not recorded with the best sound quality. However, the music is so strong on those albums that we actually glance over the lack of quality in the recording uh, in the recording quality. And again, so great music will always translate over an album, even if the recording quality is not good enough, or as long as the recording quality is good enough, right? Good enough is a magical word here that, um, you know, perfectionism sometimes brings out the worst in us and it prevents us from putting ourselves out there into the world. And so the standard that I have kind of adopted is, good enough. Again, in a body of work, I feel like it's important for us to create greatness. And when we put out things that are good enough, you know, maybe you miss a period somewhere or you play the one wrong note on an album. Well, it's not the end of the world because you've put out 25 albums. So good enough and create a big body of work. You know, again, when you create recordings, you can use that momentum to build your career And you can use that momentum ultimately to fund future product projects. Y'all recordings, absolutely essential for all artists, all musicians. All right. Number four on the list. It's important that all artists, all musicians have an invoice and a gig agreement template. So both of these things are templates that you can just have saved on your computer and they're ready to roll whenever you need them. You can reuse the templates. Do not try and like reinvent the wheel every time you get hired for a gig or you need to create an invoice. Just reopen that same file, change a couple things, and then shoot that file off. We want to shoot for efficiency because, again, I know if you're anything like me, you want to focus on the music. So every time you get a gig, don't type out a new gig agreement. Just Use the last one you used, change the names, change the dates. So first off, an invoice. An invoice is important because if um, I create invoices whenever I go on the road, you know, if when I get paid, I create an itemized invoice that says, hey, on this date, I went on the road for this many days and every day I get paid X amount of dollars and I was on the road for 20 days. So you owe me let's say $100 a day times 20, and that's what you owe me at the end of my gig. I send that invoice to the manager, and then the manager sends me a check. So it's important for all of us to have an invoice template. The invoice should include your contact information, should include itemized fees, and how your clients can pay you. Very important. I get paid from an invoice through my work here at Second Line Arts Collective. I get paid on an invoice with Michael Buble. I get paid on an invoice when I get um, when I do freelance work. I've, I've written so many invoices. So have an invoice template ready to roll. A gig agreement is also an important document to have handy. And um, let's say you get hired to do a private party by someone. Someone gives you a phone call and says, hey, can you play in three weeks at my daughter's wedding? When you have a gig agreement, that's going to be something in writing between you and the client that outlines the details of the engagement. This uh, gig agreement is going to make the client feel comfortable hiring you. It makes you Present yourself as a professional that can be trusted and you are reliable. It's important to get everything in writing. Whenever you agree to something, get everything in writing. I can't tell you how many times I have um, been in, dis- in have, I've disputed the facts of a gig with either someone hiring me or someone I've hired, right? When you have everything in writing, you can just pull up the piece of paper and said, excuse me, we agreed that the gig starts at seven. It is 625. I will not start playing until seven o'clock. Or 
you can say, hey, excuse me, right here on the on the gig agreement, you agreed to give us meals. Where's our food? Or, hey, you agreed to pay us at this time. I need my money right now. So all of that stuff is really important. It also works the other way too. Hey, if um, if the gig, if the client hired you to bring a quartet and you show up with three people, well, now the client says, "Well, where's my fourth person? You said you were going to bring you you were going to bring a quartet. I only see three musicians." It's an agreement between both parties to make everyone feel comfortable. The uh, gig agreement can outline things like playing time, breaks. If you're getting fed, um, set up, breakdown, sound system, and any other details that, um, that need to be talked about. I would suggest that every musician also have a W-9 filled out, saved in your email or saved on your laptop, ready to send out. You know, most of us work as freelance musicians, as 1099 employees, and it's very common to get an email that says, hey, can you forward me a W-9? I'd like to pay you. And I like getting paid. So if I have this document ready to roll, I can just send it immediately. And I don't have to delay. I don't have to make the client wait. wait, And I don't have to ultimately wait for my money. So have a W-9 saved on your laptop ready to roll. If you'd like to download this um, this PDF, you can visit secondlinearts.org slash online. And you can download a sample private booking agreement form that is outlined here. And you can also download my invoice template that I use. And again, I would encourage you to download both of these templates and change the names and just use them for yourself. All right. Number five. Professional photos. In any professional situation, you are going to be asked to provide photos. And it's important, again, to be ready to roll when that opportunity presents itself to you. Professional photos, I would suggest that you hire a professional photographer to take headshots or portraits of you. A headshot is a photograph that is a professional representation featuring the person's face and features. Uh, A portrait is going to be more of an artistic representation of that person. So when you're hiring a photographer, specify that you'd like headshots or portraits. Um, You know, again, there's not a huge difference between the two. Um, I would also suggest, as for all musicians, take one photo of just your face so that you can apply for um, movie opportunities and TV shows. They're going to they're gonna want specifically a headshot for that. Um, anyways, y'all, a photo is worth a thousand words. So the photos are a great way to tell the world who you are and what you're about through your image. And that's called branding. And with a photo, you should be able to tell what instrument you play. Um you know, with your facial expression, are you serious? Are you funny? Are you happy? Are you playful? Are you sad? Like, what is your vibe like um, through the dress that you have? Is this, you know, is this person hip, athletic, business, suburban, urban, don't care? Are they a visionary? You know, if um, I'm just going to say, like, you know, if you're if you're holding a basketball and in a basketball jersey, people are going to think you're a basketball player. So, you know. Just use your creativity to help curtail your image to the world. And through that visual representation of yourself, you're going to tell the world who you are and what you do. So you want that process to be as easy as possible. You don't want people to think too hard about it. You want people to look at the image and say, um, oh, my gosh. You know, when they look at a picture of me, hey, that's Gregory. He likes to smile and he plays clarinet. Super easy. Um, Do some research. I know taking photographs can be extremely intimidating. So I find with preparation, that can alleviate the process and make the process ultimately a little less intimidating. Um, Find photos that you like, imitate them. And then from that imitation, you can innovate. 
uh, pick a location, um, pick some backgrounds, um, outfits, haircut, makeup. Um, just think about what you want to look like and how you're going to present yourself. Um, I like to do, um, I think it's important to have photos with like a backdrop, like a solid backdrop. It doesn't have to be a specific color, but sometimes it's nice to have like um, photos that aren't on a physical location. Um, practice taking photos with your phone. This will allow you to see what facial expressions that you like. Do you like it when you smile? Do you like it when you're serious? Practice. You have a phone. You can take free photos. You don't have to buy film. Do all of this stuff beforehand so that so that when you show up, you're ready to roll. You're confident in what you want. And you can direct the, the photographer to take the photos that you want. You know, I can't tell you, um, you know, it, it would just be such a disappointing experience to show up to pay a photographer $500 to take pictures. And then you don't like any of the pictures. Do your research and show up prepared. Now here we have a couple photos that we have provided for our students here at the Sanaa Music Workshop. And it's super easy. You can look at my photograph right here. There's a picture of me um, with a clarinet. And immediately, that guy's a clarinet player. Uh, you can see the gentleman next to me. He's smiling. He looks like a happy guy. He's got a saxophone. Um, and so basically with all of these photos, I feel like they say a lot about the person, who they are, and what they do. And it's, a, a grand, again, a great opportunity for creativity and to it's an extension of your creativity. All right, the next thing. Number six on the list is to develop a biography. A biography uh, any festival, gig, teaching opportunity will ask you to provide a biography. A good biography should be a compelling story and detail your why. It's going to give you exposure, create a connection, and be informative about who you are. If you have the budget, pay a professional. Ask for a one-paragraph bio and a long-form bio. Uh, most often for performance opportunities, there's going to be a limit for the length of the bio that you can provide. So it's important that you have a one paragraph bio. On your website, you can provide a longer, more detailed bio if someone is interested and wants to find out more about you. Um, but it's important to have both. I would suggest that if you have a long bio, make sure that the first paragraph contains all the pertinent information to who you are, what you do, and then in the next paragraphs, it can be more of a detailed story about your life. But I have in my bio, in, my, in the biography that I have on my website, the first paragraph is my one page, is my one paragraph bio that I use 90% of the time. And then the rest of the biography is lanyap or extra information for the people who actually want to dig into every little detail of my development and life. If you don't have a budget to hire a writer, you can write your own. Um, find a bio that you like and imitate it. Do not lie about anything on your biography. It's 2024. It's easy to do research. Do not lie. You do not want to be um, inauthentic in your presentation as an artist who you are. People will find out and that's not going to be a good thing for you. Be sure that you write your biography in the third person instead of saying, uh, hi, my name is Gregory. I play the clarinet. You need to write the biography in third person. So just say Gregory Ajit is a clarinet player. Gregory Ajit was born in San Antonio and started playing clarinet at the age of 10 years old. And Gregory studied. So make sure it's in third person. Be engaging. Include relevant information. Describe your music, career highlights, and achievements. Use media quotes. I would highly suggest that you use AI or ChatGBT to help you with the writing of the bio. Do not ask ChatGBT to write a bio and then copy and paste it. Use the information that ChatGBT provides you as a guide and then edit the bio from there. So you can help, ChatGBT can help you get the process started and then you can edit it and make it your own. 
Again, your bio should include who, what, where, when, why, and how. And of course, I have included a sample biography. This is the first paragraph of my long form biography. And this is also my one paragraph bio example. Um, Gregory Ajid is emerging as the preeminent jazz clarinetist of his generation. The New Orleans-based multi-instrumentalist maintains an extremely active performance schedule, playing both clarinet and saxophone with Grammy award-winning artist Michael Bublé, Delphio Marcellus' Uptown Jazz Orchestra, and his own Gregory Ajid Quartet, with whom he has released three albums to date. Gregory comes from a strong tradition of jazz excellence, education, and mentorship in New Orleans. As a protege of clarinet guru Alvin Baptiste, it is only natural that Ajid has found great success and fulfillment as an educator. Alongside drummer Darian Douglas, Ajid is the co-founder of Second Line Arts Collective, a nonprofit organization dedicated to cultivating the artistic and entrepreneurial growth of aspiring creatives. It is no surprise that aspiring clarinetists who look to Ajid, his strong social media presence marks him as a leader in the worldwide clarinet community. While boldly, boldly and deliberately carving his musical path, Ajid says he is simply building upon the innovations of his heroes. So that's, that's my one paragraph bio. And as you can see, basically from reading that one paragraph, you know every relevant piece of information about me. One paragraph. All right, y'all. The next thing, number seven, website. Get your website together. It is essential that you own your own place on the internet. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, social media platforms and other websites come and go. MySpace. When I was coming up, MySpace was a thing. MySpace does not exist anymore or no one uses it. So if you put all your investment into MySpace, the day that thing disappears, you got nothing. So that's why it's important for you to own your own space on the internet. Um, you can use social media platforms to direct traffic to your site. That's, that's, I, I love that right there. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, that's how you build your audience. And then you send them to your website on your website. You can once again, control the narrative of who you are, and you can also keep more of your revenue. If you're selling your CDs, if you're selling any of your products, um, you get to keep more money if they're buying it directly from your website. And y'all, it's 2024. Make your own website. Do not hire a professional web designer to create your website. Unless you absolutely need it, make your own website. And even if you have no web design skills, you there, there are the tools out there for you to create your own website. Um, if you do decide to hire someone to pay, if you do decide to pay someone to create your own website, I will say this, it's very expensive. And one of the huge downsides is that if you need to make a slight adjustment to your website, it's going to take weeks for them to update and it's going to cost you more money. Every time you interact with this person, they're going to want money and it's going to take time. If you own and, and control your own website, I can just go fix that typo real quick or update the photo. It takes five minutes. So as you're starting, go and buy a domain name. Use a service like GoDaddy.com and purchase your domain name. And that is like your www.gregoryig.com. That's what a domain name is. Make sure it syncs with your brand. Make it easy to find and easy to remember. Um, you know, just that's, that's a really important thing right there. Make sure it's easy to find and easy to remember. There are a couple of hosting services that will help you create your website. They are drag and drop services, and you can create the entire website on the internet. It's very easy to use. I use it, and I know a lot of people do use these services. A couple of them that I would recommend are Wix, Squarespace, GoDaddy, Weebly, and Banzoogle, which is specifically designed for musicians. I personally use Wix. The Second Line Arts um, Collective website is also created using Wix. Um, here are some links 
two examples of websites that are created. I think they're all created with Wix right here. Uh, GregoryAgedy.com, SecondLineArts.org, DarianDouglas.com, who is the other co-founder of Second Line Arts. And if you all are instrumentalists of some sort, I'm sure you've heard of Chad Leftwitz Brown. And his website is a very heavily visited website with a lot of e-commerce. I believe his website is also created with Wix. All right, y'all, we got two more. Number eight, create a booking email template and a one sheet. Once again, it's really important that we have these templates because we're going to constantly be booking gigs throughout our life. We are going to be constantly booking ourselves for private parties, constantly creating invoices. When you have this template, it's going to make your life a lot easier. (coughs) Excuse me. Create a booking email, create a booking email template that you can easily adjust to inquire about performance opportunities. Keep it in your notes app so you can easily copy and paste the email and send it to whatever venue that you are looking to book your gig at. Try and find the name of the booking agent or the person you are contacting. I would suggest that you don't create a super generic email that like you just copy and paste and it says, Hey, booking person, I'd like to play at your venue. Um, Blah, blah, blah. That's going to be, you know, these people receive a lot of emails throughout the year, throughout the month, and you need to find some way to hook them to create value for yourself. Unless you're a really big name, you know, you need to create value for yourself. So I would suggest trying to create a connection Um, Something like, hey, you know, my friend played at your venue last month and I visited it and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Loved the sound, thought it was a great place. And I was super excited about the possibility of bringing my band here. Um, I would suggest also that you find the name of the booking agent. It's going to give you a lot more cred if you say, hey, hey, um, hey, Jason. Versus, hey, booking person. Hey, Jason, I got your contact information from James, who played at your venue last week. It was a great gig, and I was just picturing myself playing at the venue. These people's names are out there, so do your research and try to find them. Um, Sometimes it's, it's impossible, but I would suggest trying to do your research. In the booking email, be sure to include who you are, what you want to do where you want to play, when you are available, uh, why you will be an asset to their performance schedule. Remember, whenever you're asking for something, don't ask for something. Don't take. You should always think of the opportunity. as like, how can I give? How can I add value to your organization? How will I be an asset to your performance schedule? How can I get contacted? And cr- include links to everything about your band. Make it easy. They should not have to search for you. Everything that they need should be right there. Also include a one sheet. Uh, These used to be called EPKs, but I believe EPKs are kind of waning down, um, you know, with social media websites and such. But I think it's nice to include a small file, a PDF graphic of a couple megabytes And um, it'll include photographs of you and all of the information that you've included in the email, all condensed into one beautiful looking graphic. And that's called a one sheet. Everything they need to know about you with photographs. And once again, if you'd like to download a template for booking email, you can visit um, secondlinearts.org and download our booking email template. And you can also download this template of a one sheet that I created for myself um, specifically for this class. But I think I'm going to use this one um, moving forward because I like the way it looks and I think it's cool. And if you look at the, uh, the, the one sheet, I have my name in big letters. Very easy to see who I am. Clarinet, saxophone, education. Boom. Right away, you know who I am. You see this photograph that correlates to clarinet. You got links to my website, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, some press articles. I have a downbeat feature, NOLA.com, Legere Jazz Jam, some videos. 
Um, there's this cool little quote from Downbeat. Actually, I, I hate this quote, but I hate the, the lanky musician. I'm not lanky. <laughs> Anyways, it's from Downbeat, and that is a very prestigious magazine in the jazz world. So it's important to include that quote. It, it adds, uh, it validates who I am and adds credibility by connecting myself to a very reputable magazine. Uh, the quote, uh, the lanky musician has a warm, infectious personality that seems to lift the mood of anyone he comes into contact with. His playing reflects that spirit. So there you go. Downbeat. So that's an EPK, excuse me, a one sheet and a booking email. All right, y'all, we have two more, two more. Number nine, LLC and business bank account. So this is more on the business side of things. This is very important. This is very important. It's not not exactly sexy um, or fun to do initially, but this is a terribly important part of your legitimacy as a, as an enterprise, create an LLC. And at some point it may be um, a good idea for you to create an S corp. I am not a tax professional, so I don't exactly know the uh, ins and outs of the differences. However, I do have my own LLC and so far that has been satisfactory to me. So I'm going to speak a little bit about that, but I would highly encourage you, if you have any questions about an LLC, find a tax professional, find a lawyer, an attorney who can answer the precise questions that you have, because I am not one of those. So I'm just going to share the information that I have a a little grasp on. But if you have more questions, please, please ask someone who is certified to answer those questions. All right. Beautiful. LLC stands for a limited liability company. And it's important because an LLC is a legal designation that separates Gregory, the person from mystery blues, the business. That's the name of my LLC. So in the eyes of the tax law or the the eyes of the law, Gregory, the person And Mystery Blues, the LLC, are two separate entities that are separate designations. So for me, Gregory the person, um, and I think the easiest way of explaining this is if something ever happens on a gig, it's important to protect Gregory the person because they're not actually hiring Gregory the person for the gig. They're hiring Mystery Blues, which is the company that I own and kind of work for. So let's say there's an issue where my I get sued. And if um, Gregory, the person, I own a clarinet, I own a saxophone. Um, let's say I own a house. Let's say I have a million dollars in the bank. And so all of those are assets that Gregory possesses. And just for the record, I don't possess any of those except for the clarinet and saxophone. But If an issue ever arose and I was doing business under my own name, my assets could be seized from me. The client who has an issue with me could sue me for the million dollars in my bank account, could sue me for my house, sue me for my clarinets and saxophones. However, if I have a LLC that separates Gregory the person from Gregory the business from the Mystery Blues LLC, Now, if I'm doing business under my LLC and there's an issue that arises, the person who I am, who's is, who's suing me can only go after the assets that my business owns. And the assets that my business owns would be the $5,000 that I have in the bank account, but they are not allowed to go after Gregory Ajid, the person. They can't go after the million dollars I have in my bank. They can't sue me for my house. They can only go after the what the business owns. So anyways, that's an important distinction and separation to have for all of us. And you know what? Wealthy people take advantage of all of these legal separations. And so we should do what they do. It's working for them. Let's make it work for us. Um, anyone can create an LLC. And you should create that LLC in the state that you reside in. Um, It'll change your tax status 
And, um, you know, ultimately, again, these are things you should talk about with your tax professional or attorney. Uh, they can detail this in much more detail than I can. Um, but, you know, when there are there are certain tax advantages that you can have when you have an LLC and there are certain business opportunities that you can take advantage of through an LLC. Um, one of them also being like business deductions, um, business deductions. That's something really, really important. Everything that I buy as a business ends up getting deducted at the end of the year. If I buy a clarinet, if I buy a saxophone, if I repair the clarinet, if I repair the saxophone, if I buy reeds, sheet music, um, all that stuff ends up being a tax deduction for me at the end of the year. And having an LLC makes that a little bit easier. For those of you who reside in Louisiana, I would suggest that you fill out the paperwork yourself because it's very easy, especially if you are a one member LLC. If you're a one member LLC, it's very easy. I would suggest that you go to gobiz.sos.la.gov and you can fill out the paperwork for, I believe, a hundred dollar fee. Super simple. If you go on google.com and type in LLC or create LLC, it's going to bring you to services that will help you fill out the paperwork and they're going to charge you an additional fee to do that. So not only do you have to pay the $100 fee to create an LLC, but then you have to pay for that service to help you. You can just go directly to the state of Louisiana and fill out the paperwork yourself. And the same would apply for whatever state you reside in. Do your research go directly to the state website and register the paperwork for an LLC with the secretary of state. Um, and then if you do that, you'll save some money. Again, y'all rich people use LLCs. They use corporations. They use tax designations to allow them to keep more of their wealth. Use this knowledge to help you. Um, also during the pandemic, there were some benefits for business owners. So take advantage of those opportunities. Once you have an LLC, you can open a business bank account and then you can have a bank account that is dedicated to your business and that will be separate from your personal bank accounts. Um, it's just going to make your life easier doing taxes. It's going to make you more legit as a business. You can have a business account then you can have your personal accounts. And that way you keep the person and the business separate. You can also file for business credit cards. And so every time you have a business, like for me, every time I have a business expense, I swipe my business credit card. Every time I have a personal expense, I use my personal credit card. And at the end of the year, all of my business expenses are on one account. All of my personal expenses are on another so go ahead and create an LLC and get a business bank account. All right, y'all, we've come a long way and now we are on 10. Create a logo and cohesive branding. Every, every business, every corporation has a brand. I see the McDonald's logo. I see Oreos, um, Hello Kitty uh, Lay's potato chips, you know, Wikipedia, all of these images are synonymous to a brand. Each one of these brands has an image that as soon as we see the image, we associate it with the brand. It gives us a feeling, a feeling of safety, a feeling of legitimacy. We know that we are safe with that brand and that brand can be trusted. Theoretically. <laughs> I'm not going to go into my personal thoughts and all this kind of stuff. Anyways, the logo, it, 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 it legitimizes the brand. Every major brand has a logo. You can create merchandise with your logo. And now you can sell things to help move your business forward. Uh, it allows for brand recognition. It allows your audience to recognize who you are. You can stand out from your competition you know, all of a sudden, if my logo differentiates me from the other hundred clarinet players out there, it creates an emotional con a connection. A logo can in invoke emotion and create a sense of connection between you and your audience. It allows them to show love to you. If they wear the T-shirt with your logo on it, that's they can show you love. 
It can communicate your essence, your values, and the benefits that people have for, for associating with you. And ultimately, again, it gives your audience a chance to show loyalty to you, right? We have to give them that opportunity to show us love. I would suggest that all of us create cohesive branding. So this is very important. Uh, Use one photo for all of your profile pictures. You should have the same photo on your Instagram. You should have the same photo on your Facebook, the same photo on your website, the same photo when you go play a gig. And that will tell everyone that, hey, this is me. This is this is what you're hiring because um, I'm lucky. My name is pretty unique. There are not a lot of Gregory Ajids running out there in the world. But let's say my name was Gregory Smith. There'd probably be a lot of Gregory Smiths in the world. So maybe, you know, if they go find an Instagram with Gregory Smith and then the profile picture doesn't match, uh, they, they, you know, you don't want to you want to create a cohesive quick, uh, trustworthy experience so that as soon as people search for you, they can find you and they don't have to go an extra step to, oh, that's him, that's him, that's him. You know, you just want to make it easy for people. Do the same thing with your name. You know, if um, let's say you perform under an artist name, everything, if you want to be known as your artist name, Everything that gets thrown at the world should be through your artist name. Um, for lack of uh, a better example, you think of something like Eminem. You know, I know we we do know his real name, but for the most part, it's always Eminem. It's always Eminem. And there's no confusion as to what you're going to search. So be sure to, you know, part of being a creative is not only do you create your art and your music, but you're also creating your life. And you get to determine who you want to be in this world. If you want to be known through an artist's name, it's your responsibility to always put out that name into the world. Don't confuse your audience. Create one cohesive message and one cohesive image as to who you are so that people can recognize you and people can easily find who you are. Again, create one experience. It allows you to be instantly recognizable. It creates a sense of safety and familiarity. And if people hesitate, you know, it's going to add, it's, it's, you know, in that one moment, maybe you lose a fan, you know? Uh, so create an easy experience. You have one moment to connect with someone, make it count. If you'd like to, uh, if you, okay, so that's that's the end of today's uh, masterclass. And I believe that is, um, if you accomplish these 10 things, you are going to be at a whole new point of your musical career. Uh, if you're interested in downloading our invoice template, gig agreement, booking email, or one sheet, please visit secondlinearts.org and you can download the material from our website. So once again, y'all, My question to you is, how many of these items have you accomplished? Use this checklist as a to-do list if you haven't accomplished one of these things. So once again, y'all, social media, register with the PRO agency, get some recordings together, create an invoice and contract template, get press photos, biography, website, booking email, and a one sheet, create an LLC or an S-Corp, and create a logo with cohesive branding. And once you've accomplished these 10 steps, you are going to be a very legit artist, a very legit musician, and you are going to be ready for a lot of opportunities in your career. And when someone asks you for something, you can just give it to them. You don't have to say, oh, I got a photo shoot next week, so I'll send you an email in in three weeks. Um, Anyways, Y'all, I hope that this was a meaningful and um, a good experience for you. I hope that you learned something. And ultimately, you know, my goal as the artistic director of Second Line Arts is to um, pass along the information that I have learned over the last 10, 12, 13 years of being, oh gosh, it's longer than that, maybe 15 years of being a professional musician and navigating my way through the music industry. 
And, you know, I think that something that's really important to me is that you can only teach what you know. And I, I am an artist. I'm a musician. I have made my living purely from performing, teaching, and doing something music related ever since I've left college. And I think that, you know, I think that like I've navigated a lot of these experiences myself and there's nothing that, that I preach that I haven't done myself. And I'm still in that process. You know, it's an ever, ever going process for me. I'm not finished. I'm still doing all of these things every day and trying to learn new things, and new ways of navigating through the business. So anyways, something that's of value to us here at Second Line Arts is teaching from the perspective of experience. If any of you all have any questions or want to reach out to us, please hit us up at our website, secondlinearts.org. You can send us an email via there. Please connect with us on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook. Uh, We would love to hear more about what you think. Please leave a comment, drop a like. And uh, yeah, so anyways, I appreciate y'all hanging. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you are able to move your career forward and um, achieve all of your dreams and uh, live the life that you want to live. All right, y'all. My name is Gregory Ajid. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you all next time. Peace.